Hey, it's Father Steve coming to you from the recording studio at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Clare Spring, Maryland. And our Bible study today is going to cover the fourth Sunday of Lent, the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is March 19th, 2023, the fourth Sunday of Lent. Oh my goodness, we're getting close, are we not? So um, for the fourth Sunday of Lent, I'll just uh, give you the, the readings um, um, for today. Um, our Bible studies, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. That's 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. Uh, Psalm 23, which everybody knows, uh, but we don't do the, the Psalms in our Bible study. Okay, we're good. And a uh, letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, 8 through 14. The letter to the Ephesians. Uh, chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. And then we're going to look at the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. So again, repeat um, what we're going to do in our Bible study. Uh, 1 Samuel, um, chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. We will uh, do a letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. And the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. Okay, so let's move on to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. A little bit of background on what we're uh, reading today and what you're going to hear in church. If we look back one chapter to 1 Samuel 15, we learn that God directed the prophet Samuel to crown Saul as king. Thus, Saul became the first king of the twelve tribes of Israel. Then God commanded Saul to follow his orders in a battle with the Malachites. Saul disobeyed the Lord's instructions, making God angry with him. Samuel informed Saul that God was so angry that he had decided that Saul would no longer continue to be the king. In Samuel 1, or 1 Samuel 16, God instructed Samuel to go to Bethlehem and anoint one of Jesse's sons to be the next king. God promised to guide Samuel in choosing the son that was to be anointed king. Okay? So there we go. So let's take a look at the first question. We're going to look at the first question in 1 Samuel. And this verse this deals with Samuel 16, 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 through 3. This is our first question. And probably just very simple, quick answers. What did God command Samuel to do? What did God command Samuel to do in 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 through 3? What did God tell Samuel to do? Okay. Okay, our second question, what was Samuel's response to the Lord's command? What was Samuel's response to the Lord's command? And this is verses 2 and 4 of 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16, verses 2 and 4, what was Samuel's response to the Lord's command? That's our second question. Okay, our third question what was God's answer when Samuel guessed that Eliab would be the son chosen to be the next king? What was God's answer when Samuel guessed that Eliab would be the son chosen to be the next king? Now that's from 1 Samuel 16, verses 6 through 7. So question 3 comes from 1 Samuel 16 verses 6 through 7. What was God's answer when Samuel guessed that Eliab would be the son chosen to be the next king? Okay, now our fourth question described David, and this is from 1 Samuel uh, 16 verses 11 through 12. Describe David. Describe what David looks like. Describe David. Okay, three more questions from 1 Samuel. How did Samuel know whom to anoint? And that's 1 Samuel 16, uh, verse 12. How did Samuel know whom to anoint? Okay, two more questions. Question 6. And this is for, from 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. This is from 1 Samuel Chapter 16, verse 13. Here's where this question comes from. 
What happened to David when Samuel anointed him? What happened to David when Samuel anointed him? Okay, and our last question from our Old Testament reading. What impressed you the most about this account? What impressed you the most from this account? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go on to Ephesians. Okay, we're going to look at Ephesians. Okay. These verses instruct us to be good, to live righteously in truth, and to conduct ourselves as children of light. That's what these verses are about, for us to be good, to live righteously in truth, and conduct ourselves as children of light. So there's five questions that I'm going to throw at you for this one. All right. And this is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 and 11. This question refers to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 and 11. What did the writer encourage us to do? What did the writer encourage us to do? Okay, second question. What did Paul tell us about light? And this deals with Ephesians 5, 8 to 10. And 13 to 14. This deals with Ephesians, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 5, 8 to 10, and verses 13 to 14. What did Paul tell us about light? Okay, there's five questions. Remember, this is the third question, kind of a challenge question. Our third question from Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. Find other references to the word light in the Bible. What do you think light symbolizes? Now, we've talked about light, and for our Thursday evening program, Lenten program, the light of the world, that's our, that's our light. So, um, anyway, what does this say about light? Okay, our fourth question. What is the difference between light and darkness? I know I've preached on this many times. What is the difference between light and darkness? And we look at Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verses 11 through 14, and John 1, 5. So what is the difference between light and darkness? We see this in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. We also see this, a reference to this in John chapter 1, verse 5. What is the difference between light and darkness? Okay, our last question. One more question from Ephesians. What must we do to walk as children of light? What must we do to walk as children of light? This is in Ephesians 5, 8, 5, 10, and 15 to 17. What must we do to walk as children of light? Okay. Okay. So now let us move on to John. The Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. The Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. So a little background. In this scripture, Jesus healed a man who had been blind from birth. Certain Jews witnessed this miracle, but refused to believe that the man who could see was the same man who had been blind. Their disbelief displayed a spiritual blindness, but the blind man who could now see believed Jesus and worshipped him. Okay, So we have about nine questions from the Gospel of John. And the first one comes from 9-2. first question refers to 9-2. What action from the past did the disciples attribute to the cause of the man's blindness? What action from the past did the disciples attribute to did the disciples attribute to cause the, mind, the man's blindness? And that's from 9 2. Okay, our second question. 
What was Jesus' answer to the disciples' question? And this is from John 9, 3 through 5. What was Jesus' answer to the disciples? And that's a gospel, John 9, 3 through 5. What was Jesus' answer to that? Okay. Okay, moving along here, our third question. Describe the reaction of the people when the blind man returned to them able to see. Describe the reaction of the people, and this is from John chapter 9, verses 8 through 12. John chapter 9, verses 8 through 12. Describe the reaction of the people when the blind man returned to them able to see. Pretty short answers, right? Not much discussion here. Now, our fourth question is going to deal with John 9, 15 and 17. Our fourth question question will deal with John chapter 9 verses 15 and 17. What was, what was the cured man's answer the first time the Pharisees questioned him? What was the cured man's answer the first time the Pharisees questioned him? Now our, our fifth question. Now this is going to refer, our fifth question is going to refer to John 9:25. 27 and verses 30 to 33. So this question referred to John 9, 25, 9, 27, and 9, 30, chapter 9, verses 30, 33. What was his answer the second time the Pharisees questioned him? What was his answer the second time the Pharisees questioned him? Okay. Our sixth question, there's nine in total, our sixth question. What did Jesus do when he heard that the Pharisees had cast out the man who had been blind? What did Jesus do when he heard that the Pharisees had cast out the man who had been blind? And this deals with uh, John chapter 9, verses 35 to 37. What did Jesus do when he heard that the Pharisees had cast out the man who had been blind? Okay, our seventh question, and this deals with John 9, 38. What did this man who had faith in Jesus say and do? What did this man who had faith in Jesus say and do? Our eighth question, how did pride and lack of belief hinder the Pharisees? How did pride and lack of belief hinder the Pharisees? And that's in John 9, 31, correction, 39 to 41. How did pride and lack of belief hinder the Pharisees? And that's in John 9, 31 through 41. How did their pride and lack of belief hinder them? And that's John 9, 39 to 41. Okay, our last question. Our last question for today. What is the most important lesson you have learned from this scripture? What is the most important lesson you have learned from this scripture? Okay, so we're moving right along through Lent and uh, remember to keep it as disciplined as you can and keep it holy and, and uh, Eventually, and we're going to be celebrating Easter Sunday and before that, Holy Week and the Triduum and all that, those important things that come with it. So we'll see you real soon. God bless.